Welcome. My name is Linda Linton and I'm an artist who specializes in nature and the natural world. Uh, I want to welcome you to the exhibit at the Boardman Road Library in Poughkeepsie. We're recording this before the exhibit goes up. It's actually December uh, because we're in my studio. And I put it, all the pictures, all the paintings that are going to be in the show are here. And I'm going to talk about the, the collection of paintings that will, you'll be seeing in the library. Now, the title of this show is Seasons. And there's a very specific reason for this. The curator of this show, a wonderful woman named Ruth Wally, her first choice when she looked at all my paintings was this selection of 12 paintings. Now these paintings were done um, over the space of a year and I did one every single month. The house I was living in, in Woodstock, had an enormous field in front of it, about four acres, something like that, and all woods on either side. And this field really dominated the house. It, it's enormous. And I decided just to paint a painting of what I saw every month. Uh, as you can see, I didn't just do the field and exactly the same part. I kept choosing different parts of the field. And that's part of it. It gets kind of boring if you look at the same things. And also you keep thinking, what am I going to do this time? Or what will I look at? Anyway, uh, what was a big surprise when I did this? was the change in colour and the shifting of light. Um, it, it was a total surprise. I never expected it. You can see the there are three winter painting, one December, January and February. Those months, of course, in a sense they did. You've got beautiful deep browns and golds and you have the dark green from the evergreens, and then you have the white, the reflected white from snow and ice. But essentially, you know, it's a very limited, it's a beautiful color palette, but it's also very limited. But even within that, I found all the changes. And the biggest change, one was the shift in light. From January, which is still quite dark, you get to February, and there's light. Uh, it's, it's extraordinary how the sky changes, the air changes, it might still be freezing cold, but the light has changed. And then of course you, you shift into March, which is still too cold for anything to grow, but again, there's no snow. Uh, the light is still changing. And then of course you hit April. And April was such a shock. And those colors might look fluorescent, but they really are the colors of the time. Because one thing I became quite determined to do was try to reproduce the colors that I was um, looking at. And I was looking at while I was painting. And the green, if you really look at an April, when you get that burst of green, the green is almost fluorescent. And those peaks from the elm trees, the, it, it's extraordinary just seeing that burst of color and then, of course, come May, it's going into what we consider the normal greens, the normal sort of colours of late spring and summer. And, you know, you pass through June, July. But in this series, this is the only time I tried to paint the entire field. That's a huge distance across there. Um, it was the only time I attempted it because the field was so large. Um, and all you see, of course, the deer. There are always deer sleeping in the field. Um, you know, you, you shift through and then suddenly you're in September. You go into October, of course, with all the glorious foliage. Into November, which still is pretty colourful. Don't realise it. You know, when we think of November, we always think, oh my God, you know, winter's coming. But in fact, in terms of colour, it's still there. And of course, you hit December and we're back in winter. This was uh, the, how should I put it? It's the backbone of the uh, exhibit. Now, what I also did, and have included as other paintings I created while uh, doing these paintings. 
in a sense, everything I do was from my front yard. Um, now these paintings, the field paintings are all plein air. The larger paintings like this one, they sort of started out of plein air, you know, the, the trees are there, so it's not like a, it's an effort, but basically they're more studio oriented. As you can see here, this is one of the trees in my yard, a white pine. Um, but as you can see, there's something else here, which isn't apparent from the film picture, is the starting to see the sky. And the other series of paintings that I did while sitting in that front yard was painting the sky. Okay, now the sky paintings that I did are usually sunrises or midday. I have a bit of an aversion to painting sunsets. I always feel, I don't know, sunset at the end of the day, I, I just don't want to deal with it. But a sunrise is always full of hope because the day has come forward. Uh, this one is an early sunrise. I have a bad habit of getting up at four in the morning to do things like that. Um, it was an early sunrise. <coughs> and this one is actually called silent because when I actually did it, the, the moment when this painting was initiated, it was absolutely silent. It was quiet. And um, so I called it silent. And I hope that I managed to convey, it was like the, the, the pause before everything starts. Um, anyway, as well as this painting, uh, I also did painting, you could say, to do with atmosphere. The atmospherics that you get and that you see when you're, when you're looking at saying from like a field, and everything's very open, you know, with the air, it really shows in these two paintings that I did. This one is in December, this one January. This was a shed and some little houses, outhouses to one side of the field. And here, uh, this is December, and you can see it's grey and it's damp. You know, you get that sense of it. Here we are in January, it's very dry, very cold, and of course there's snow everywhere. So it's interesting also just trying to capture the atmospherics. Um, I also experimented with, in, at the very back of the field, there was a little white shed that obviously belonged to whoever the landowner was at that end of the field. And I find it very interesting because I tried to get a sense of the actual field itself. This is in the fall, when all the grasses have their seeds. This, of course, is winter with the snow and it was one long blanket of snow, which is quite a challenge to paint when it's a blanket. And in fact, I ended up mixing some of my own whites and I added mica to some of the whites to give a bit of a sheen. Um, you have to look closely. It's, it's not obvious, in a sense. Then, of course, there's the spring with all those crazy green coming up. And then what was a real surprise, in the summer, the white shed totally disappeared. There was so much vegetation, couldn't see it. It was totally obscured. Now, the summer, of course, is the time for painting skies, especially skies at midday. And I have three paintings that are included in the show showing summer skies. Okay, the first summer sky that I included in this is the closest I ever got to during a sunset. This is late afternoon. You can see some of the colours are beginning to change. Uh, I'm just partial to big cumulus clouds and blue skies. The second one that I've included here is one that was uh, painted in July, a very hot, humid day. But I called it summer doldrums. Right. Now, the third summer sky that I've included here is this one, which is called uh, Big Wide World. And uh, I found it fascinating because it was, it was a real exercise in observation. If you look at a blue sky in the summer, you actually will see, if you really look carefully, there's more than one blow. And in fact, to create that sky, this blue sky here, there are four different blues. 
there's ultramarine at the top and that's a very reddish blue and at the bottom and it's about here is turquoise. The blues get greener as you go down and if you look at the sky very carefully you'll actually see that in real life and of course you get the haze lower down you get closer to the horizon because you're seeing through the air and of course in the summer it's too humid so it really is handy. But it's fascinating to see even something what appears at first glance as simple as a blue sky has so much colour in it. Right, now we come to our final painting in uh, this show, which is yet another white pine that's in my backyard. Um, and, you know, I just fell, it that sort of rounds everything off. You know, the white pines I had in my yard, they're like the pillars. They're the pillars that hold the sky and the land together. They're the constructs that, uh, I don't know, mark the boundaries. Um, anyway, I want to thank you for coming to visit my studio and uh, seeing this artwork. Well, and the show, I'm sure it will, they will all look very different to here because you can see I've got the brown paper on the walls where I put wet paintings and all the rest of it. Um, so I'm very happy that you visited. I'm glad that you are, are interested enough to look at this. And um, I hope you enjoy the show.